What's up guys and gals and welcome to the first episode of Interstellaria. I was going to do this for a weekly indie newcomer because I'm actually really really new to this game but at the same time I like to retain some of that noobishness when I go into a series because I think it leads to both hilarity and frustration in my viewership. And so, I think we're going to play Interstellaria for a week or so. The game was sent to me this week by the developer. It's been made by Cold Rice Games, if I remember correctly. And it's kind of like Faster Than Light, but kind of not. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the old Star Trek games that I used to play on my Apple IIe, where you just fly around the galaxy and there's little, like, text events that you could solve by using different skills and things like that. I loved those games when I was a kid. And this game is very similar, except that it like gives you graphics and things that you could fiddle with. But by and large, you'll be flying around the galaxy, shooting at people in combat, doing all kinds of weird scavenging, exploring, heroics, all that fun stuff. Spitting, being manly, having huge pectoral muscles, all those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and start our new game up, because obviously I don't want to spend too much time yammering on about what the game is. Instead, I would rather get going and actually play the game, so let's do it. These spatial anomalies are like a high-class woman who appreciates the finer things. And here I am. Quick! Someone get me <laughs> Oscar Tyler. You have two first names, man. Alright, Oscar Tyler, there he is. Alright, enough. This is a ship of discipline, after all. Now go. Use stations wildly until you find one that fixes this. Uh, this one seems kinda cool. It says engineering. Darn you, universe, stop testing our discipline. Someone, plot us the most heroic escape they can find. I'm getting the feeling that our captain might be Zap Brannigan. Let's go ahead and we'll pop that off right there. And Trenzalo is the closest. Detect system trends. Oh, Trenzalore. Okay, I guess it didn't fit into the text space. Click on it. Press engage engines to finish laying in your course. Okay, I think that worked. You've been hailed by an unknown vessel. Minimize your map to engage. That's a nice ship you've got there. I'm gonna have fun tearing you out of it. Why are we being attacked by a space samurai? A one-eyed space samurai guy? Who can fly? I don't know, you can continue to like stack on as many- Oh, that's right, okay. So the combat takes place in this little window down here at the bottom. If I right click around, my ship will move. As you can see right there, he's firing at us. You can actually duck and weave in and out of these asteroid belts right here. He's actually gonna send the same thing twice. So what we need to do is click on him. And then you have to scan him down with this button right here. And once you've actually scanned him, you will find that there are things that you can do. Alright, and so this guy's saying that he's going to help with the defense now because we're defenseless. And so that has put a bunch of weapons on deck for us over here that we can now activate. These are their cooldowns. And so as these fill, they will fire again here. Hold on, hold fire for now until he's actually inside the asteroid belt. Because at the moment we're just like wasting munitions firing at things. Is he crashing into the asteroid? Like what is he... He's crazy! Alright, let's fire some missiles or something at him. There we go. Nothing says welcome to the galaxy like hot steel or hot tungsten or whatever it is we're firing at him right now. In the bottom right hand corner, we can actually dodge his fire too. I like the fact that the game is semi like real time at the same time as it is turn based where you're firing guns and everything like that. Everything's on a cooldown, but I like how it's real time and we can actually weave around the enemy. And so down here, you could see his armor, which we just blew off of him. When he dies, what is combat is like love hard fast and lacking intimacy when it's over <laughs> all right so what we could do is we can click on this debris over here all this detritus that we might it might be floating around the flotsam and or jetsam and i think it puts it in our ship maybe oh it won't let us open the inventory yet because we're still inside of the little tutorial now if you want to leave combat what you do it took me a second to figure this out is you click this button right here. No, don't fly through asteroids. That seems like a bad idea. Those seems like they seem like they might be slightly harder than the ship we're inside of. I don't want to say that our ship isn't hard because obviously he holds it down on the block, but I just don't want to take any chances. There we go. And then you click on that and it should take you out of the galaxy. From there, we'll click back on the map. Oh, never mind. We're still going to Trenzalore. All right, on to Trenzalore. So we got a squid man on our ship. Chanel, the squid man. What is this? Oh no, it's them. Fight like you've never fought before. I... Why would you want me to fight like I've never fought before? Shouldn't I use my previous combat experience to get better at this? Oh my god, the guns on this thing. Ah! And so we are, of course, being shot to pieces right now. But my point is, 
you should fight as though you have fought before because that means you're an experienced combatant and so you're actually meant to lose this fight you might as well sail right into all the bullets I like how it animates everything that happens like in the combat zone that's really really cool it's what you'll see as our armor is going down each time we're hit this is part of the storyline you have to do this it's a space submarine and it's really really grumpy submarines are in a terrible terrible mood when they aren't in the water if you end up putting them into space and just kind of floating around on a space submarine they get very very kind of just irritated about it okay so let's oh that's right okay so we click on this so on different planets you'll see this later on but when we go to different planets you can click on different locations and you can land at them for right now we're sort of crashing with no real trajectory that we can control and so we're gonna go down right here and land we go someone survived the crash maybe some useful tech survived as well and so yeah Oscar Tyler is our guy I wish his name was Oscar Mike isn't that like a military thing Oscar Mike I'm pretty sure it is he says missed it I don't know he said something before that but I didn't see what it was over here we've got a Game Boy good just in case we get bored on a foreign planet we can hang out and play Game Boy a special patida used to manage planetary missions this patida is still functional its previous owner crashed on Trenzalore about a year ago after being attacked by an unknown alien ship. The captain attempted to repair the crashed vessel, but died right before repairs were complete. How coincidental and good for our adventure. You can board the nearby ship by placing a selected crewman in front of the ship and right-clicking that crewman. Alright, so what we want to do is we got to go over here. Poop. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So if we want to fix the ship... You just right click on any of the modules that you want to fix just like faster than light there will be hole breaches there will be fires that you have to put out and so it has borrowed some of those ideas but at the same time this game is very very distinct from ST FTL I almost said STL slower than light yeah that seems a bit more realistic slower than light travel we don't really do anything come back in a, you know, a couple hundred thousand years and we may have accomplished maybe something possibly we may have gotten to a destination I'm gonna repair this rather enormous hole in the side of the ship because I am not okay with unauthorized holes being in my ship. That seems like a great way to not make it very far in the galaxy. So we'll jump back off the ship. I wish that this door right here made the Mega Man sound a little tick 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 tick. I don't know. When you went into the boss fights, I was like that. We can also scavenge. And so here's a debris pile. There are a few med packs on the ship. Let's open the inventory above and use them on myself. Why? I'm okay, aren't I? Okay, so the mission carries cargo, so there's these, and I think you can just drag them over to here. Yeah, and so it'll show like a little injection animation. And then we also want to drag and drop that over to here. Okay, and so now that we're good, the game's going to want us to harvest. You can auto-harvest by clicking on a character, and if you click on this little flower hand thing up here, it looks like a hand that's on fire. Which is how I like to imagine it, because if my hands were on fire, I feel like I'd be moving so quickly through the atmosphere, harvesting that they just caught fire from friction with the air. It might burn slightly, but it'll be awesome. And so now you can auto scavenge. So he went and he grabbed some flowers, then he brought them back to the ship. And once you have multiple people on your ship, this becomes incredibly useful. Ow, no, don't do that. This native beast is neither rare nor friendly. We'll have to take it out to get more scrap. I'm sure there's a gun around here somewhere. Indeed, there is. It's right here. So let's go pick up the needler. Chick chick, we got ourselves the needler. If you go to his inventory now, it'll show that he has equipped it right there. It's a rather elongate piece of weaponized machinery, but it'll do for now. It'll do for right now. It's not beautiful to look at, but maybe it'll kill something. Eh, you gotta get what you can get. A rare life form found only on Trenzalore. They just said that it wasn't rare. Uh, I guess we're murdering it then. Let's murk it. Yeah, unleash the Daka. Apparently it's resistant. The kickback is so bad that we're sliding place. It's got like a noisy cricket thing going on where you're just like sliding backwards as you're firing. You'd be like, who designed the cartridge for this gun? This is so unnecessarily powerful. When we kill things, coins pop out of them because Mario. And so we're going to loot this final. What is this? I forget what this is. We need three scrap in the ship's inventory before taking off. The takeoff button is next to the inventory button. Back to the ship. No, that's guard mode. That one right there. So this button is to auto harvest. This button is to hold your ground and guard because things may attack your ship once you land. And this one right here is just return to the ship. You can use WASD to move the camera around if you really, really want to. If you don't really, really want to, you can pan along the edge of the screen too. And that works perfectly fine. I guess we'll get back on the ship right now and let's lift off. And so it appears as though we've gotten ourselves our own space marine. Or not a, what, how, what would you even call it? It's not a submarine anymore, but we can't call it a space marine either because I can see Gibbs Workshop calling up their legal department already, so I'm not really sure what I should call it. 
An Overmarine? Hmm. An Astromarine? There it is. It's an Astromarine. That's what I'm calling it from now on. It's not a submarine. It's an Astromarine. Incoming message from Trade Company Headquarters. We accept. Congratulations on your recent acquisition of a genuine old Empire vessel. This vessel is registered to Trade Company. Now you too can join the bravest of the brave amongst the stars. Please stop by for assistance. We've uploaded our coordinates to your ship. Well, that was nice of you. Okay, so what do I want to do now? I guess we should probably go check stuff out. I think... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we've got stuff in our cargo hold. So we've got the sleeper cell. We've got the refrigerator. I was going to call it the food canister, but it's a refrigerator. I don't think that this moves around at all. We've got an extra med kit. Very, very nice. And so what you want to do is if you drag this over to here, you see how there's a blue one with a hammer. It installs it on your ship. And you can just, like, drop it over here. I'll probably put the sleeping canister over here in the back of the ship just to keep it somewhat segre segregated from the front of the ship, which will have all the machines that do work, son. So let's go ahead and put the fridge in. And I'd like it to be within arm's reach of my bed so that I don't even have to get out of bed. I can just reach right around and grab myself breakfast without having to get out of bed. Sounds great. Sounds absolutely fantastical. Now I can equip these guns as well. We've got 20 millimeter Gatling guns. And so we'll put those right there. These are your effective slots on your ships. You can put all kinds of stuff in here, whether they be guns, random utility things. Right now we've only got guns, and so fortunately we're just going to throw some DACA into whatever location we can. If in doubt, equip more guns. That's my motto. All right, and so up at the top left, you will have an old friend from FTL showing up, which is where you can allocate power to your various systems. The green one right here is all of the random machinery around. You'll see that when we put power into that, we need one power bar right there for each location. He will handle his needs all by his lonesome, which is good. Our extra energy is down here at the bottom. If you're not running weaponry, eh, there's really no point throwing your weapons a whole bunch of power when you're not in a fight. So I tend to reallocate at the outset of every engagement, and I just leave everything in navigational speed. Right here is how fast your engines will go. So engine speed, electrical utilities, and weapons. Just if I could put that, I guess, as eloquently as possible. I, I'm still not sure that I explained that perfectly, but honestly, I think we've done a decent deal of it right now. So what we want to do is if you equip somebody on navigation, you get plus five speed. Let's go ahead and put a whole bunch of power into engines. And in fact, I may try to jet in between locations as fast as possible because travel can be quite slow in this game at times. So we want to go to Trade Co. So we're just going to click on that. And it says we've got what looks like maybe 17 seconds left until we get there. I don't know. If we go back, I don't think it's going to be 17 seconds, sir. It looks like, there we go. So it was over a minute. So we've got one minute until we arrive at the trade company, at which point we will probably get ourselves, oh, he's hungry again. Well, fine then. You will notice the background slows down when I move things. Is that, what... God, I thought somebody fired a projectile at me. I was like, why? What have I done to you, spacefaring race? Why would you bother me like this? I'm eating fried chicken out of my fridge. At what part of that sounds terrifying to you? Scanners have detected a damaged pod drifting through space. Drifting. That's different from drifting. Drifting is kind of more of like a rotational drifting. So if you don't have like a rotational vector, then you would call it drifting. But up until then, if it's just flying in a straight line without rotating, it's drifting. I'm making this whole thing up. There appears to be a life sign aboard in stasis. The pod is badly damaged and may explode. We could rescue the occupant, but we risk severe damage to our ship. Well then, thrilling heroics, go! Rescue attempt successful. New crewmate added. Press anywhere to continue. Ooh, we got a girl on our ship now. Wait, what does that thing mean above her head? Is she evil? What does that mean? She's got like a little Satan skull above her head. What does that mean? I hear like opera in the background. People are like, Satanus! It's all scary. I don't know. Why does she have a little thing above her head? Does she need to sleep? Is she grumpy? Fighting two enemies is just like, oh my god. Okay, so we're under attack. No! Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of power for our guns. How about that? How's that sound? And we'll take all these systems offline for more electricity to our boosters so that we can afterburn our way around here. Now we need to scan down one of these ships. I'm probably going to go after this guy right here. We've got him scanned down. Commence firing. Reduce him to space rubble. Does it count as space? Okay, so down there at the bottom right, you see how he lost some armor when we did that? I'm going to try and weave around him. Oh, we've been hit with bullets. In fact, our new crewmate was hit almost directly with all of the bullets by herself. Here, don't stand there. That seems dangerous. There we go. So one ship is down. Let's keep moving. You definitely don't want to stop if you're in the middle of combat. We're going to scan down the second ship here. And having scanned him down, you will see that we are returning fire 
I'm gonna try and keep like a, I don't know, I'm gonna call this North, East, South, and, I'm sorry, North, East, South, and West when I refer to it in video from now on. I realize we're functioning in three space, but we've got a 2D panel, and so I have to reckon it somehow. So anyways, I think I'm gonna try and stay along the southern border of the mission map area and just kind of head towards the west. Hopefully that will allow us to evade most of the incoming projectiles while at the same time exchanging fire with these weird little froggish looking tadpole ships. They look like they've got enormous lips. They remind me of those fish from Mario Brothers, like Mario 3, those fish that jump around with the enormous lips. Let's click on all the Debris because obviously we want that. I know that Debris is not how it's pronounced. Please don't correct me. And then we're going to go back over here. Every time I don't say anything about it, there's like 10 people in the comments that are like, actually, it's pronounced debris. And I'm like, yeah, I have a solid understanding of six letter words. Thank you. <laughs> I want to know why she has a little devil skull above her head. Caprica Ven. Oh, okay. So this is if we have multiple ships, we can swap that around. That makes sense. That makes sense. Hopefully it makes a lot of sense because we need some money. We are broke right now. Let's go ahead and evacuate the mission area. And then once we're all out of that, we will head on to somewhere else. Yeah, tell me what you think about this game. This game actually took me by surprise. I requested it from the developer a few days ago and he shot it back within like 10 minutes. And I'm really actually pretty excited about the way that it's been playing through. I don't typically watch Scott Manley very much because I don't like learning. I'm kind of an, I'm, I'm a perpetual idiot like that, and he makes me feel dumb. No, I'm just kidding. I watch Scott Manley every now and again, and he was playing it the other day, and I was like, you know what? I really want to play that game because it seems awesome. And so I emailed the developers. They sent it over, and I've been pretty pleased so far with it. Let's go ahead and, I think, where are you there, sir? How do I select you? Let's find out if we can maybe... Maybe it's in this personnel thing. Hold on. What is that? Oscar Tyler's needs are not met, but you have arrived at Trade Company Headquarters, so it doesn't matter. Commencing Planetary Scan. Planetary Scan reveals a breathable atmosphere, Captain. Downloading satellite data. Starport has cleared us for docking. Planetary Scan complete. We will land, and this is where I shall... Oh, we gotta click on a spot first, otherwise we'll probably land in one of these weird scratchy spots over here. Or, God forbid, right next to this teddy bear thing with angel lightning wings. Let's go ahead and land. Sorry about that, I miscalculated my episode length. It's all my fault. So we're back here at Trade Company. We're not gonna break it off just yet. I thought about breaking it off, but unfortunately, then I looked at my timer, I was like, Oh my god, what happened here? It's Thanksgiving, I'm addled, there's a lot of things going on. Just don't worry about it. There are many people to talk to. Click the one with the red arrow. They want to join your crew. You do realize that we essentially are flying around the galaxy in a tiny little cylinder, and you can smell all occupants of this ship at any given time. We eat nothing but fried chicken, and it's just there's no sink, there's no bathroom. We've picked a poop corner because we don't really have a choice. I, Are you sure? I mean, I really feel like I should be trying to talk you out of this. Any chance you're looking to hire? Come with me. Come with me if you want to be in space. I don't care where we're going or what we're doing as long as it's far from here. Why are you a criminal? You're a criminal, aren't you? You committed a criminal act and now you're you're trying to sneak on board my ship and you're going to do terrible things. What the hell does that little thing above their head mean? They both have red shirts. I'm going to assume that it has something to do with their expendability, but I don't know. They don't really seem to want to walk around very much or like do anything. I wonder if it's like evil crew members and good crew members or something. I never seen that. None of my other crew members had that. My god, that ship. Where'd you find that thing? My ship? Yeah, I'd know that ship anywhere. It was lost about a year ago. Probably one of the first victims of our unknown abductors. Abductors? I'm sorry, I'm very confused. That ship was one of the first to be attacked by a group of unknown alien abductors. It was last recorded sending out a distress signal from the captain, the sole survivor. Our ship attempted to rescue it, but we could never find it. Well, I salvaged it on Trenzalore. I see. Well... By the law of the UHC ownership, you are now the proud owner of a new vessel. I just hope for the sake, or I just hope for your sake, it isn't cursed. Can I ask you some questions? It's a grim vessel you're flying. What do I do now? Well, I'll tell you what. Here are the coordinates for a Sakari colony. Most of us are looting it blind now that all the colonists there are gone. I'd say upgrade your star map to include the known galaxy and begin a merchant's career. What about the alien abductors? Well, I'd avoid them. However, there is a one. Ooh, a $10 million reward for finding any way to defeat them. It's worth it keeping an eye out. Let me ask you something else. Well, walk away. <laughs> Alright, so they've decided to call this a space bar. I don't hear any music or anything going on. It says that I could click on this, and I don't know if it like is telling me to do that as an imperative, or if it's just kind of like a light suggestion, like, yo, you can walk inside these doors. 
Over here, it looks like we can, the best the Trade Co. has to offer. Okay, so we can hire more people if we wanted to. That's pretty sweet, just in case you need further crew members. What does this do over here? Nothing? Okay, so we can't go in there yet. What does this do? These ships are a pile of garbage, but for the right play... Ooh, they could be your pile of garbage. I have always wanted my own personal pile of garbage. Maybe one day I will aspire to that. Maybe one day. If you go to your inventory here, you should be able to sell stuff off. And it'll say in demand right there if it's an item that you can sell for a lot of cash. And so there we go. We got ourselves $525 to get started with. We got a couple of health packs. And then we should probably buy something from here. So there's a surplus of health packs that we could buy for cheap. Tactical scanners. A navigations thingamadoober. An engineering box. I don't know. It's just got like a clock on the side of it. And maybe it's got some police tape wrapped around the top. Somebody used it as a murder weapon previously. That's why it's so cheap. Medical box. Okay, so you can heal slowly inside the ship. Sounds good. Another fridge. A stasis tube. A juki box. Okay. Lots of interesting things in here. Although none that I'm really super stoked about spending a ton of cash on. I suppose I could buy a couple health packs at the discount cost. And then maybe I can drop them off somewhere else if we... I, I'm not sure. Let's go. I'm going to jump back on the ship. And while we've got time, let's go ahead and get in line to go to the next planet we can find. How about that? What does this say? A special patita. Is it still... Does it do anything for me right now? No? It's just kind of like hanging out? That's cool. I mean, I don't really require it to have any specific function. It'd be nice if it did, but you know... So they've all got their own skills right here underneath. It looks like he's okay at navigation... Who's really, really good at navigation, though? Does anybody have navigational skills? Nobody has navigational skills. So it appears as though this is kind of like my problem. I'm thinking I'm going to take the gun off the captain, and we'll give it to one of the red shirts, because, eh? Dirk Opera looks like he has the most health out of everybody, so let's make him our, I guess, our exploratory unit. Not that I want to be exploring any units right now, but he will be our exploratory unit, which we will thrust deeply into unknown spaces, see if maybe we can find our way around. Maybe anything cool that we can steal and scoop into our cargo bay that we might sell it later on. I like this game a lot. I love the way that it's presented. It kind of reminds me of the really early generation Sega Genesis games, where everything's, it's simplistic, but at the same time, everything looks really nice. I enjoy it. So you there, here, you go over there, Dirk. There. You go over there, and I will go over here on the navigational console. Yeah, so we got plus six speed instead of plus five. I think they level up as they use abilities. I don't want to swap anyone around right now, and I wish that I would stop clicking that button. So where we want to go? We can go to Sakari. Trade company. How do we get way the hell out here? That's weird. Hold on. Let's go look around the galaxy. Maybe there's something else that we can fiddle with. I have no idea how long this game is or, like, how much content there is at the moment. I know that it is actively in development at the time of the recording. Simultaneously, eh, this might actually be, like, the beginning or the end. This might be a really, really short series, depending. So, I know that it's still being developed. Haven't really figured out how to save yet. Hopefully, I'll figure it out in between here and, like, the next couple episodes. But... There is this right here. Oh, there it is right there. The brightly labeled save game button. All right. And so I shall say, ooh, I like that. It's the same little sound that it makes when a Game Boy turns on. I enjoyed that. That was nostalgic for a second. Get back on there. Listen to everything. Yes, push buttons. Push buttons desperately. It makes us go faster. This is how space science works. All you non-space science people, don't worry. If you're ever in a space-related situation, just push some buttons. And I'm sure your ship will go faster and nothing terrible will befall your ship. I like how we have these normal just kind of antenna arrays on top like they would put on top of a submarine or anything. Also how we have these paddles on the back. I wish they went back and forth like it was swimming. That'd be super awesome like it was swimming through space. I know it doesn't work like that but it would be great. It appears as though there are a number of ships following behind us in a shark-like fashion and that makes me feel a little bit nervous. The only time I want anything to be shark-like is Animal Planet on Shark Week. Other than that, no shark-like ever included with anything. I have a deep... So people that have been around the Nerd Castle for a while will tell you that I have a deep underlying terror of sharks. So we can go to Colony A, eh, Colony B, or Heels. Let's go to Colony A? Planetary... Oh good, breathable atmosphere. Hooray for us. Oh, that's so awesome. I love how... Yeah, just crash the ship wherever. Don't worry about it. It's all fine. All right, Dirk. It's time. Gather! And so he's going to pick some flowers, because that would be the only reason that I would ever explore space. Does he have multiple inventory slots or something? 
Oh, he just dropped it off instantly. Okay, I get it. I get it now. He's got our first firearm. It looks like he's gonna get... No. Dirk, shoot that. No, don't punch it. What are you punching it for? I thought I gave you a gun. Hold on. Where... <sighs> Dirk. Where's your firearm? There we go. Re-equip your firearm. Alright, spine creature. Prepare to die. What has gone wrong here? Hold on. Hmm. Hide in the ship. Back inside the ship. Hold on, Dirk. Why are you not shooting at the enemy? Maybe that's only for the captain. Maybe it's a captain's only pistol. Like it reads his DNA or something. Hmm. Can I equip this somehow? Anybody? Oh, I can take off my shirt too. Can I put that in my hand then? No. There we go. Okay. So I think it's just like, inc no, Dirk, what are you doing? He's like, what does it look like I'm doing? Is that a trick question? I'm suicide bombing the spiky thing with my face. Like, oh, damn it, Dirk. Why? All right. Want something done right? You gotta do it yourself. Here we go. Unleash the Daka. And so we have defeated this spiny little creature. Lots of spiny creatures out in the desert. I'm kind of glad we didn't land anywhere with desert. Desert is kind of whack. I'm going to allow him the first honor of salvaging anything he might want to salvage. I'm going to have him disembark. We'll have him do the same thing. And as they run things back to this central location, hopefully they won't get themselves into too much trouble. There are nasty critters all over the place here. So I want to be very, very careful. This is not the extent of my knowledge. I've, I've harvested like every location on this planet. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let's play this. It seems super awesome. If we die, hopefully hilarity will ensue. What is this? Is that gold? Tell me that's gold that you just picked up. I love gold. Everybody loves gold. Who doesn't love gold? Gold is fantastic. Although I always felt like it was kind of arbitrary that people picked gold to be like a thing that was worth a lot. I always thought that was sort of humorous. Like just over the course of human history, at some point we were like, you know what? This shiny yellow metal, guess what? This is going to be the most valuable and most important of all shiny yellow metals. Let's continue harvesting. I may actually put her on it too. Here, jump off the ship and get back out there. Get back out there and do work. Everybody get your cardio running. So they're coming back over here. We'll take him back to the ship with everything that he's got on him. Looks like we've got some kind of weird Tiberium thing going on right there. Be careful if you start to mutate. I'm going to leave you on the planet because huh, purge the mutant, kill the heretic. You know how it goes. I couldn't be a Warhammer player if I didn't bring that up right now. Let's take that. We're going to drop this back onto the ship. It looks like we got all kinds of plants. We might be able to make some money off this venture. No, Dirk. Dirk. Stop what you're doing right now, Dirk. Stop what you're doing right now. You fool. Wait, she got gemstones? No, you stop what you're doing right now, too. Everybody back to the ship. You're just getting wounded. Hold on. That's a robot over there. And if I know one thing about space, it's a robot with red underpants and a widow's peak. Apparently, he decided to accessorize his entire paint layout to his underpants. I'm. You gotta match your clothes how you gotta match your clothes. I don't know. There we go. Unleash the DACA on him. Do I have... I think I probably have limited ammo with this thing there. Now that we've got everybody, I can send everybody back over now to Harvest... I think this is probably just like a freebie gimme planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you going to like, technically you're taking your own orders right now because you're the captain. How are you going to be like, yeah, yeah, about your own orders? Let me see if I can maybe just be the expeditionary force, head out here and possibly stop bad things from happening. Okay, so we've got these little guys right here. Oh, no, they're behind a wall. They're behind a wall. Can that even be opened? I've probably got to talk to this robot, huh? Let's talk to the robot and see what's up with him. Yobot, what's up with you, robot? What are you doing here? My main function is to monitor food stores. We are currently experiencing an odd surplus. What happened to all the colonists? The colony repelled several unknown black creatures, but ultimately were unable to stop the advance. We await their return. Black creatures? My programming prevents me from answering that question, Captain. Oh, come on. Any valuable salvage nearby? You are likely to find a key to access Colony B somewhere in this colony. Okay, so that sounds pretty awesome. Is is it by any chance in your pocket? Am I looting? Picked up a valuable scrap. Hold on, jump up there. Practice your platforming. I like how it just platforms on its own and I don't have to do anything like talented or, you know, unexpected in order to make this work. Come on, gatherers. Do your thing. Is that a declaration, or are you just, like, letting me know that's what you need to do right now? I can't decide if you're using an interjection, 
or if you're just like telling me like certain things need to happen otherwise you're going to soil yourself not sure wow we got cash skrill of money coming in right now an assortment of precious gems and metals okay that sounds good I think I'm going to finish off, like, scavenging this place. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode, or the first episode of Interstellaria. I forgot that I made, like, a little cut in the middle. I will see you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.